Production and trade are among the fundamental engines of economic growth in a globalized world economy. However, one critical aspect stands out, the connection between production and environmental pollution. This visual series is part of the SMEP program, established by the United Kingdom's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office in partnership with UNCTAD. In these episodes, we'll analyze the role of exports in industrial pollution caused by important manufacturing sectors in the Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia regions. Plastic pollution is also on our radar. Using evidence generated by the SMEP program, we'll indicate ways to solve the problem, which is critical for the local population and the entire planet. We'll address these issues by taking a closer look at the policies and technologies used to combat pollution in four sample countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, Tanzania, Kenya, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. Located in South Asia, Pakistan, officially the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, is the fifth most populous country in the world. It's also one of the oldest sites of human civilization including the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. Now, back to the era of exports, Pakistan produced $20.5 billion worth of manufactured goods in 2020. This production, aimed at foreign markets, causes a significant environmental impact at the source. The textile industry, for example, is considered one of the world's largest sources of pollution. Therefore, this sector was selected in this case study because of its economic relevance, life cycle analysis impact, and available data. So let's have a look at the production of woven cotton. It involves several steps, and for each one of these steps, we have identified the following. Step one, impact on marine ecotoxicity and non-carcinogenic toxicity to humans due to the use of fertilizers and pesticides during seed cotton production and land use. Step two, untreated domestic and industrial wastes contribute significantly to pollution through direct and indirect discharges of effluents in the adjacent coastal waters. Batch dyeing is critical for marine ecotoxicity and carcinogenic toxicity to humans due to toxic emissions from wastewater disposal during textile production. Step three, at the operational level, weaving, bleaching, dyeing, and finishing are phases that can be primarily associated with ecotoxicity and human toxicity. These effects lead to damage to local ecosystems and human health. Dr. Javid Avan, a pollution specialist in Pakistan, highlights the importance of woven cotton life cycle analysis in order to improve the industrial process. You know, Pakistan is like the biggest uh, cotton producer in the world. And uh, due to some uh, lack of technology, they had to work on that to develop some sustainable processes. And uh, what they can do actually, they can focus on using as much as less water they can use and to, for the dyeing processes and to treat that water actually, which is coming from the industry. So for the treatment, we have different solutions we can devise, we can work with the industry. We are still working with industry and international partners. We are trying to find a better solution where we have the less uh, filaments and the waste steam going into the uh, uh, into the uh, environment actually. The area of innovation and entrepreneurship is an excellent area where young, uh, energetic, capable people invest their own time they understand the problem and then they can devise new solutions out of the box. They're not tied down by operations, they're not tied down by um, a delivery timeline and um, um, some metrics that are related to production. They can analyze the problem and then look at the technology map that exists and match them together and come up with solutions. I think so that there are two aspects of sustainability in Pakistan textile sector and women cotton, cotton industry. One is the technical one and the other one is the managerial one. Uh, for sustainability, we have to focus on the use of good chemicals in the textile processing. 
and then we have to focus on energy efficient machines. And from the managerial aspect, I feel that the major concern is sustainable human resource in these organizations. I think this institute has contributed a lot in the development of the concept of environmental management system in the textile sector. Many of our graduates are working as industrial engineers in the many of the textile companies in Pakistan. What about the private sector's perspective? Mr. Rahim Nasser from the All Pakistan Textile Mills Association also emphasizes the main issues faced by the woven cotton sector in Pakistan. Uh, really concentrate, we concentrate on two things. One, water uh, consumption, uh, especially in the southern region, the Sindh region, there's a water shortage. Uh, and of course, in the Punjab region, where the water table is going down. So the, the key is uh, the usage of water per kg of dye, how much dye we, we do. And second is uh, the cost side, because I think technically we are a little weak. We need assistance on uh, usage of chemicals, which kind of usage, uh, which kind of chemicals we're going to use and what is the ratio of that chemicals. So two things I think are the most important, water usage and uh, chemical usage. Uh, there's a lot of there are a lot of factors that need to be considered. Your top management has to be aware of the importance of the sustainability uh, when it comes to cotton. Uh, they have to be trained um, on these kind of things so that there is a change in the mindset of the top management. And when the when the top management is motivated to do this kind of or take these kind of initiative in their organization, uh, the effect actually trickles down into the rest of the organization so uh, essentially at the private sector uh, there are uh, different stakeholders at the government sectors there are different stakeholders you have to keep them take them together build their capacities um, so in order to make these kind of initiatives more um, successful and more sustainable it's as we say together possible nothing is done by walking alone this is how SEMEP works identifying challenges by listening to local voices and funding the development and implementation of solutions to the industrial pollution in targeted regions. Our aim is to improve the environmental governance of production and exports, paving the way for competitive and environmentally sustainable products that are compatible with SDG 12 and value the health of workers and populations involved in the production of goods we all consume. Want to know more? Visit our dashboard for a complete overview and data access resulting from the work of the SMEP program. And keep an eye on our website. Opportunities for pollution mitigation projects are advertised.